welcome to yet another episode of The Good Grand Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Um, right, it's afternoon. Uh, well, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday afternoon. What better time to uh, toast some whiskey with you? Um, uh, this afternoon we'll be looking at, uh, at Cole Eva, as you can see, mine up in front of me. Um, Cole Eva, I, I like Cole Eva. Um, I guess uh, it's quite uh, uh, an important malt in, uh, with regards to my, my sort of uh, education, should we say, within whiskey. Um, it was the first uh, single malt that uh, um, really got me into uh, single malt whiskies, and um, I remember after after ta after I tasted it uh, for months afterwards, all I could sell was Cole Ela. It was just like this is incredible. You've got to try this. This is brilliant. Um, so you know, I've uh, I've always enjoyed Cole Ela, um, and uh, um, so good whiskey to uh, to to do on a rather cold uh, uh, winter's afternoon then. Right, okay, um, firstly, uh, a bit of blurb on the distillery. Um, the distillery itself uh, is currently owned uh, by uh, Diageo, who uh, a couple of years ago sort of um, plumped a vast amount of cash into, uh, into the distillery to up its production. It now produces somewhere in the region of about six and a half million litres of spirit a year, which is huge, it is big. Um, I mean, it always has sort of churned it out, shall we say, uh, not using that terminology in a derogatory way, but uh, um, you often see a lot of coal either, certainly in independence, which is why I've got a couple of independent bottlings uh, uh, to share with you this afternoon. Um, it also does a wide variety of uh, peating levels as well. Um, it's the kind of stuff that, that the blenders love. Um, it certainly goes into sort of uh, Johnny Walker and things like that. Um, and they do everything from unpeated, as in, as in this one, uh, through to sort of you know, rare, fairly heavily peated um, spirit. Um, incidentally, although it is peated to sort of like the same peating level as say something like Lagavulin, it certainly doesn't taste quite as uh, intensely peaty, or should we say, generally speaking, it's kind of middle of the road, I would say, with regards to sort of the intensity and the peak levels. Apparently, um, part of that is due to um, the fact that where they take their cut, uh, or the middle cut, they take it uh, relatively uh, early on at sort of 75%, um, and then sort of cut, uh, take the, uh, the finishing cut at around about sort of 65%. Um, what this basically allows is a lot more of the fruitier esters uh, to be captured certainly earlier on in the in the distillation and less of the sort of the the heavy earthy um, and sort of more peated notes which tend to come through towards the tail end of the distillation so um, and I've always liked the sort of the fruitiness of coal either it has to be said um, and certainly um, over the years I've found it to become it's 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 come become more oilier in, in character it's certainly when I first encountered it, sort of, um, you know, 13 odd years ago, uh, it had a very fresh um, kind of character, which I used to sort of call sort of garden fruits. It had this sort of, not peas, but a sort of that kind of fresh gardeny kind of note to it. And sometimes almost a sort of maybe a, a Sauvignon blanc -y kind of character, you know, a little bit nettly, a little bit sort of, you know, um, herbal. But certainly the last time I tasted the distillery 12 year old, it certainly got a lot broader, a lot oilier. Um, and yeah, you know, although neither one or the other was, was better than, uh, the, than the other, it was certainly an interesting and slightly different change. But um, the distillery itself has been in uh, operation since 1846 um, and it's gone through a number of hands. But like I said, the, the current owners are, are Diageo. So, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a big distillery. Um, that's enough of, enough of the waffle, I think. Um, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's introduce the lineup, shall we then? Right, okay, so like I said, um, Coal Eva, uh, big distillery, 
um, produces a wide variety of, uh, uh, of different uh, different peating levels and so on. So I thought it, let's let's look at a couple of the distillery bottlings and a couple of independents, and you know we'll we'll see um, what the differences are. So we're going to start with uh, good old unpeated Colila. This is the um, twelve year old uh, distillery release uh, released um, last year, if memory serves me correct. Um, it's uh, quite high in ABV, it's 64%, so a little jug of water for that one. Uh, then we will be move, moving on to this one, uh, which is um, a bottling by Douglas Lang in their Old Malt Cask range. Uh, it was distilled in September 1996, bottled uh, in November of last year making it a 16 year old uh, bottled at their usual strength of 50%. This one here, the next one, is uh, a bottling by uh, uh, James MacArthur. Um, it is, uh, or was, shall we say, distilled in 1982, bottled in 2008, uh, single cast bottling, cast number 733, and it is a 26 year old. Comes in a really nice, nice bottle in actual fact. Um, and finally, Although this is probably should have been tasted sort of um, sort of close to the beginning because it's only 13 years old, this is the uh, current uh, distillers edition, uh, which is um, I believe 13 years old. Um, yep, distilled in 1998, bottled 2011, finished in uh, ex Moscatel cans. So we're expecting that to give you know, a nice a nice sweetness to. Uh, uh, to, to the spirit, so it'll be interesting to see um, if that is indeed the case and uh, how the uh, the spirit works with um, with that finishing. So, so there you have it. That's uh, that's this afternoon's lineup, and um, let's crack on, then, shall we? Um, so let's start with the unpeated. Um, now the thing about the unpeated is that obviously it has no peat. Uh, stupid thing to say. Um, but what it allows you to do is to see the character of Coalila. What is what does Coalila give? Um, you know, without sort of uh, the, the peat sort of you know playing a, a dominant role. So let's have a look at the nose then, shall we? That is, that's alcoholic. Um, pungent. Quite oily. A um, little bit of cereal. Some nice apricot, but oh, that's, a, that's a lot of alcohol. A lot of um, sort of getting past that is quite difficult. But a little bit of gristiness, plenty of barley, little little herbaceous note, which is which is quite pleasant. I mean, it's like I said, it's it's really oily. It's very dense. A little bit of white fruit, a little bit of perfume. It's. I mean, you know, for a spirit, I think it's it's remarkably complex, um, and like I said, I think this is you know a fascinating look um, at a, a spirit that you normally sort of um, expect to be peated, and um, it shows you that it is not sort of one-dimensional. It's not just you know a peated whiskey. It has some complexity and character of its own. Yeah, now you get a little bit of banana, a little bit of little bit of pineapple, maybe those sort of higher esters um, that uh, uh, I was explaining about taking the, the cut at a slightly higher point. Incidentally, another reason, um, so it's alleged that sort of, again, cold lever tends to be sort of more, more fruity, is that um, they only actually half fill the still, so um, it's certainly not, not rushed through, although um, to sort of churn out sort of six and a half million litres of alcohol a year, it's pretty much working round the clock, I would imagine, these days. But anyway, enough of that, back to the whiskey. So, yeah, that's that's nice, that's a lovely nose. Um, not a huge amount of oak in actual fact, there's a little bit there, it's kind of more sort of sitting in the background, sort of giving some support, but you're not getting an overt amount of, of wood vanillins. A little bit of spice maybe now, but. Yeah, and it's starting to get a little bit fresher as well. Um, not a hugely coastal in actual fact. Um, I mean, there's a bit there, but it's not sort of 
not a rampaging sort of salt monster by any, uh, any stretch of the imagination. Pallet then. Yes, that's got some alcohol. Fruity. Apricots. That's a little bit of banana, a little bit of pineapple, uh, some lovely barley. Lovely. Oh, it's got a really nice sheen to the barley. Not so much honey, but it's just got all oh, lovely, wonderful barley character. Not a great deal of progression. Um, which is pr which is pretty much down to the alcohol. The alcohol is is very intense, um, but it's got some some oiliness. Like I said, some lovely fruit. But I think that definitely needs a little drop of water. Um, so let's see if that um, opens it out. Then shall we? Mm, now we're getting a little bit more oak, a little bit more sort of. Mockery cocoa, possibly a little bit oilier. Um, certainly, uh, certainly as dense as it was without water. Mm, getting quite fragrant again. A little, little bit of orange. Um, mm, yeah, that's that's really nice. A um, little bit of vanilla now, but again, that uh, the oak is. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Alcohol is still, uh, still affecting the voice. Um, that oak is certainly sort of more supportive and more sort of in the background, shall we say, which is, uh, which is quite nice. So, But yeah, like I said, definitely some sort of mockery kind of heavier wood note. Mm, yeah, nice. Lovely apricots, summer barley, um, lovely length to it. Um, probably not. It's got a little bit. It's it's not huge, hugely complex, um, but you know the flavours there have a lovely depth to them, lovely broadness. Lots of barley, like I said, a little little bit of sort of of a floral finish. Um, but yeah, that's that's really nice. That's really interesting. Uh, and like I said, it goes to show that Coalila does have you know um, some character other than uh, than just being peated. So yeah, like that. That's good. Right. Okay. Let's uh, let's go on to the next one. Sixteen years old. Um, again, American oak, as you can see from the colour. Um, well, the fifty percent. So let's see what the nose gives us. Mm. Phenolic, quite briny, very oily again. Um, really, really oily. Again, some sort of heavy sort of apricot. Relatively peated. Um, it's got a nice kind of phenolic, herbal. Lightly bog myrtle peat. Hmm, it's nice to notice that. Um, it's it's kind of pretty much classic coal either. It's uh, it's got a bit of coastal. It's got you know, like I say, it's got a bit of everything really. It's just uh, and it's not not hugely peated. It's sort of nice in the middle. Um, it's a, I've always thought of it as a sort of a really good way of sort of introducing yourself to the uh, the peated malts. Um, and um, yeah, it's nice, good nose. Out there. Quite 
quite a ferny bit of bracken to start off with. Again, some fleshy apricot. Gently sooty on the middle pat on the mid palate, um, with the with the peat being more of a sort of more dusty in character. Um, more yeah, very dusty. A little bit of light tar, oily again. Finishes really nice. And then you've got this sort of drying kind of coastal finish to it. That's that's really nice. Like I say, I mean that is kind of like spot on coley. A little bit of maturity. Again, not a huge amount of oak. It all kind of like it's 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 kind of there, sort of sitting in the background, but you're not getting any real sort of um, oak uh, vanillins and things like that, which allows a sort of the spirit basically just to, to come through with a sort of oily, um, fruity kind of character. So nice finish, yeah. Nice sort of saltiness and the the edge of the, the edge of the palate. Well, I said it's a bit oily. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Incidentally, I will say that um, all of these whiskies are currently available at, uh, on our website, www.cornyscott.com. Just get that in uh, earlier on. Um, and um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a nice call either. Like that. Right, okay. Um, jump up a bit in, uh, in age, uh, another 10 years, and um, here we have a 26 year old. Um, Let's have a look and see what uh, what that uh, sort of age does to uh, the spirit. Mmm, that's got some lovely maturity. Um, again, not a huge amount of oak. Um, I mean, I've noticed the Colila is one of these sort of malts that doesn't seem to sort of display um, a huge degree of oak. Again, it's sort of sitting in the background. It's got a, a lovely sort of dry fruits little bit of little bit of manure, a little bit of little bit of sort of very old peat. Very, very gentle, a little bit of little bit of violet as well. Um, oh that's that's a lovely nose, that's mature. It's got a little bit of graininess actually. Um, you know, a little bit of hardness, a little bit of minerality. Bit of, little bit of tar maybe, a little bit of that sort of coal tar, um, you know, that sort of slightly soapy coal tar. Um, but again, really broad, really oily. Um, that's, this is a lovely nose, really, really enjoying this. Again, like I said, not, not hugely peated. Um, I mean, there is a, there, there's, there's a kind of... Um, not necessarily consensus of opinion with regards to uh, peat and age. Some people believe that uh, um, the peated notes kind of um, start to drop off and lose their intensity with time. Other people believe that the other flavours and aromas tend to sort of um, become more prevalent. Um, I must admit, I think I'm, I'm more of the former. I just think that sort of like that the peat shows a lot more pungently when it's young and, and as it gets older I think that the peat flavours just seem to sort of start to diminish but this is lovely, really sort of dense, it's got a, a real sort of honeyed core to it, um, sort of earthy honey, yeah there's, a, there's if you sort of sniff hard enough you do get some mature oak um, but again it's, it's very sort of well done, well not hidden, but you know, sort of, you have to kind of prize that out, but you know, mm, absolutely gorgeous. Um, probably didn't mention what the ABV was, did I? Yeah, it's 55.2, it's fairly impressive for 26, I guess. I like them. Quite mentholated to start off with, sort of lightly fisherman friends, cough sweets, fern, bracken, a little bit of bog myrtle. The peat is very, very distant. It's mm, it's there just a bit of alcohol, um, lovely palmer violet finish. You know, sort of uh, 
you know, a, a little bit of hard bake. Hard bake often tends to have a little bit of sort of the uh, Parma Violet character. Um, bracing, quite again, a quite salty finish. Uh, certainly sitting in in the uh, the edges of the palette. Um, really nice, lightly oiled, really mature. Re it, it just it tastes venerable. Um, again, it's all very, very delicate, very, mm, really nice. I'm gonna, gonna put a little drop of water with that and just see what happens. I don't really think it needs it, um, but um, let's see what, uh, what a little drop of water does. Oh, that's, that's really brought out the freshness, actually. It's, it, you, it's kind of you know, lovely granulated sugar. Um, yeah, it's really got sugared now. Sugared and fresh. Interesting. Still a little bit briny, still a little bit phenolic. Um, mm, really nice, really nice. getting more oat vanillins now once you've put some water with it. That sort of creamy, milky vanilla. Probably a little bit less complex now. Um, I think the spirit, I think putting a little bit of water certainly has, has now emphasised the, the oak and sort of diminished the sort of the spirit character to a certain extent. Um, so that I think is, is probably uh, best, uh, best drunk neat I think. Uh, although putting a little bit of water with it certainly doesn't, uh, um, you know, it's certainly not fallen apart, shall we say, um, but it's certainly, uh, like I said, brought forward the oak, um, and that is now sort of the, the dominant feature, although the, length, the finish is really nice, yeah, so lovely, really, really nice, really impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and finally the uh, distillers edition finished in Moscatel cast. So let's let's see. Um, as, we, as we've seen, sort of Colila, quite oily, quite dense. Um, let's see what uh, finishing it in uh, in sort of sweet wine cast does for it. Oh, that's 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 fishy. That's a real fishy monster. That one. God, briny. Yeah, really fishy. Um, so what's the wine cast done for it? Well, yeah, there's some sweetness there. Um, it it seems to it seems to have given it, it kind of bolstered the density of uh, of, the, of the malt. Plenty of barley. You know, moderate again, moderately peated, slightly phenolic, um, slightly dusty. But maybe it's kind of taken the edge off. Um, the spirit and it, it, like I said it's kind of I can't bolstered just, just the word that seems to spring to mind the, the sort of the density of, uh, of it um, really thick I mean you could sort of cut this nose with a knife mm. yeah it does kind of work slightly herbal top note um, but like I said Really fishy, really briny. Yeah, it's got a lovely sort of coastal astringency, which I, I really like. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a great note. Love this. A little bit of iodine now, possibly. Hmm. Grapey, winey sweetness is evident right from the word go. So sort of really powers in. Fade is quite nice. The fade into the finish, you're getting um, again some sort of oily fruit, um, 
light sort of dusky coal dust peat a um, little bit of palmer violet a little bit of white flowers um, yeah that's that's nice um, again quite coastal slightly fishy maybe not quite as fishy as the um, as the nose would lead, lead you to believe um, certainly the uh, the finish is definitely up there first and up, up front doesn't seem to last very long like I said it kind of gives you an initial punch of this sort of whiny sweetness um, but once the sort of the brininess and the freshness kind of comes in kind of sweeps that away to a certain extent so um, yeah it kind of works um, lovely finish um, yeah yeah that's that's nice um, I mean you know there's there's always that sort of mm, do wine finishes and peak kind of work um, yeah, I think it, I think on certainly on this bottling, I think it it certainly does. So yeah, nice, quite nice. Right, okay. Uh, let's should we sum this up? So what have we found out about coal eel then? Um, has character. Yeah, take the peat away. It has you know a lovely sort of oily, um, yeah, rich, fruity kind of character. I think. I think the 12 year old um, unpeated is, is really interesting. I think it's uh, um, certainly a whisky you can enjoy. Um, if you don't like the peated ones, it has a bit of coastal character to it. It's, it's really nice. It's not cheap. Um, but then, you know, something you bottle at 64%, <laughs> you know, the government's going to take their big chunk of that one. So, um, yeah, really interesting. 16 year old, um, I th for. Bleh, Classic coal eeler, really. Um, yeah, classic sort of middle-aged kind of coal eeler. Um, really nice, uh, really fruity, bit of peat. You know, what more can you ask for, really? That's that, that's that's that was you know, pretty damn good. Um, the Twenty-six-year-old, uh, mature, elegant. Um, you know, again, sort of showing coal eeler can age quite quite well. Um, not hugely peated. Um, probably best uh, drunk neat without uh, adding a little drop of water. I think it certainly showed its, uh, uh, its colours uh, best when, uh, when it was neat. Um, worth it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's, that's a sort of, you know, a really nice, um, interesting old expression of coal eeler. And um, the distiller's edition. Um, yeah, like that. It, it, it did work. Um, it certainly wasn't unbalanced, you know, it, got, it had progression, it sort of started with the, um, the whiny Moscatel sweetness to start off with, and then through came the spirit, a little bit of pea, you know, some fruit, um, some coal, uh, some dustiness, you know, really nice. And, then, and at the end of the day, that's what you want from your whiskey, you want sort of, or I personally, I want progression, I want a sort of like, you know, uh, I don't want, well, you know, I don't want something to just taste the same right the way through. I mean, okay, sometimes those sort of whiskies uh, are okay if they've got sort of like, you know, some, some depth to them and uh, some interest. So, um, uh, but that had a lovely progression. It had sort of, you know, kept your interest and um, yeah, yeah, sort of really good. So, um, like I was saying, all of these whiskies are uh, available to purchase uh, on our website. Um, I think you should pretty much be able to find all the uh, tasting notes on my WordPress blog, so uh, you know, if you want to go and take a look at that, that that's great. Um, and um, before I go, I uh, just want to sort of say that um, next Friday, obviously the 25th is Burns Night, um, and the uh, Radio Nottingham will be uh, popping along to the shop on the, on the Wednesday to uh, uh, record a, a, a tasting, and hopefully they will, they'll be playing that uh, throughout uh, Mark Dennison's um, morning show on Radio Nottingham, so uh, um, if I get this uh, uh, video edited and uh, up uh, on YouTube uh, before uh, Friday, then um, check it out. Um, I've got no idea what we're going to be tasting uh, as yet. I'll probably sort of wing that and uh, grab three interesting uh, whiskies. Um, so, you know, uh, if you live in Nottingham or we'll have access to uh, Radio Nottingham online, um, tune in. You know, sometime Friday morning it will. Like I said, it was. I did put postulate uh, 
doing it live on air, but uh, they decided that they'd, they'd rather sort of record it uh, and play it sort of throughout the show. So no doubt they'll be sort of interspersing music and what have you uh, with uh, with that. So that would be really nice. Um, hopefully, this month I'll be. Um, tackling the, the next uh, whiskey newsletter so if you're not on the mailing list and would like to be just send me an email to um, ronacourtneywine.com and uh, I'll certainly add you to uh, the mailing list. I uh, had a very interesting tasting last night which uh, um, should form sort of the basis of, uh, of the newsletter um, and um, that's pretty much about it I guess. Um, so uh, I'd just like to say um, thank you for watching. Um, and I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of the show. Um, good dramming and um, good evening, or good afternoon as the case may be. See you later.